Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn how to write equations in slope intercept form when we have a graph or a table of values. We've already learned how to find the slope on a graph and in a table. We've also learned how to find the y-intercept in a graph and a table. And so now today we're going to put it all together and we're going to write equations for these graphs and for these tables in slope intercept form. Take out this worksheet, the one that says slope intercept form, and you can follow along with me as I go through the examples. And if you don't have a copy of this worksheet, that's okay, you can still follow along anyway. All right, so the problem is we are gonna write an equation in slope intercept form for each of the following linear representations. So when you see the word linear representations, I don't want you to worry about that, it's not scary. All it means is that it's a straight line or it's a situation where there's a constant rate of change. And that's exactly what we've been doing the whole time anyway. Now, the first question that you'll probably ask yourself is what the heck is slope intercept form? Right, we're talking about slope-intercept form and how we're gonna write these equations in slope-intercept form. Well, this over here to the right is slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. You are gonna be saying that in your sleep because we're gonna do so much work using slope-intercept form. We've already learned that m stands for the slope, so that should be very familiar to you. We've also learned that b is the y-intercept. We learned that in our last lesson, and now today we're just gonna put it all together. So, nothing new today, right? We are just putting things that we've already learned together. Okay, first thing is we have a graph. We are gonna identify the y-intercept on this graph. Now, the way that we did this was by highlighting the y-axis, right? Which I still think is a really good idea. So highlight the y-axis so you can see what you're looking at and then find the point where the line crosses over the y-axis, and we can see that that is right here. So our y-intercept is at positive three. So I'm gonna make a little note to myself that b equals three. Then we're gonna choose two good points. Now, a good point, right down here, I have a little note for you. A good point means that they fall on perfect intersections. And sometimes the graph will already have the points on there for you, but in this case, it doesn't have the points, so we have to find them ourselves. If I start at my y-intercept, right, that's a very good point because it's right on an intersection. And if I travel up here a little bit on my line, right, I have the x on it right now, that's not a very good point because it's like kind of in the middle. But if I keep going up my line, here is another really good point, right, because this point is right on an intersection. This one, not so good, right? This one up here, good point. Not so good. Good point, right? So we're looking for really good points on our line. We only need two, right? I just marked off five of them, but we only need two. All right, so now let's find the slope. So we are going to do the rise over the run using two of our points. And I can use whichever two points I wanna use. It absolutely doesn't matter. So I'll just use these two over here. I like to use ones that are close together because then I don't have to simplify so much at the end. So I'm gonna go straight up and I'm gonna find my vertical change. I'm going from four to five, right? We have to make sure we're looking carefully at these numbers. So that's a one right there. And then I'm gonna head over to the right here. That's two places to the right because I'm going from two over to four. So one over two. So my rise over my run for my slope is gonna be one over two. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna write the equation. Now we always start with this y equals mx plus b, right? That is always our equation. And all I'm gonna do is substitute these values into that equation. So y equals, instead of the m, I'm gonna replace that with our slope, which is 1 half, x stays the same, right? Because that's part of our equation. And then I'm gonna look at my y-intercept. My y-intercept is a positive three. So that means I'm gonna write plus three on the end and there is my equation. It's very colorful, but I wanted it to match up with our slope and our y-intercept. So our equation in slope-intercept form for this graph is y equals 1 half x plus 3. And what that means is, if I were to take any of these x values on the bottom and plug them in here and add 3, it's going to give me the y value, right? So let's just look at how that works for a second. So if I start it with x equals 2 right here, and I put a 2 in, Half of two is one, and one plus three is four. So when x equals two, y equals four, right? If we try another one, like say we try eight for example, right? x equals eight right here. 
when I put 8 into this equation, I should get y equals 7, right? So let's make sure that works. Half of 8 is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, right? So when x is 8, y is 7, and this equation shows us that. All right, another example. This time we have a table of values. So first thing is, let's find the y-intercept. Now remember, when we have a table, all we're doing is looking in the x column and we're finding x equals zero and looking for that corresponding y value. So it is right here. So my y-intercept is 18. I'm going to say b equals 18. Now I'm going to find the slope. So I'm going to do the change in y over the change in x. Remember, we're going to keep our y up high. I can use the first two ordered pairs, I can use the second two ordered pairs. I told you before that I prefer to use just positive numbers. I'm not really down with negative numbers. I would rather look here where everything is positive. From 18 to 23, I am increasing by 5, so that's my change in y. And from 0 to 2, I'm increasing by 2, so that's my change in x. So my slope is going to be 5 over 2, right? Change in y over change in x. Then I'm going to write my equation. So again, I'm going to start out with y equals mx plus b, because that's what we always start out with. The y equals is going to stay the same here. The m is going to change. I'm going to replace that with our slope. And our slope was positive 5 over 2. So 5 over 2. x is going to stay the same, because that's part of our equation. And then I'm going to look for my y-intercept. My y-intercept is positive 18. So I'm going to write a plus 18 on the end because it's positive 18. And there is my equation in slope-intercept form. OK, so let's scroll down a little bit. And here are three problems that you're going to try. Now, if you are feeling confident about this and you just want to try them on your own right now, that's fine. If you would rather wait um, and just follow along with me, that's fine too. If you would just want to try one of them, like maybe try number one, stop the video, and then go back and play and see how you did, I would highly recommend that, but it's completely up to you. Okay, when we have a graph, I'm going to start out by highlighting that y-axis. I really like to highlight the y-axis, and I think I'm going to highlight the y-axis over here as well. So I've got two y-axes that I'm highlighting on both of my graphs. We'll take them one at a time now. All right, let's find the y-intercept first. So here's the line, here's the y-axis. I'm finding the point where they intersect, which is right here. Now this point isn't numbered perfectly on my graph, right? I've got a 0 and a 10, so I need to figure out what comes right smack in between them, and that's going to be a 5. So we're going to say that the y-intercept is 5. Now for my slope, I need another good point. So I'm going to look on this graph until I find a point that is on a perfect intersection. You might need to zoom in a little bit or really look carefully at your paper. This point right here is not perfect. This isn't perfect either, right? The one, the one here at 2, it kind of looks almost perfect, but it's not, right? It's got to be perfectly on an intersection. That's not doing it. Neither is that one, neither is that one. I have to go all the way over to here until I find a perfect point. So these two are perfect points. We've got another one over here as well, right? We want them to lie on perfect intersections. All right, so I'm going to figure out what my slope is. I'm going to do my rise over my run. I'm going to pick two points. I can go from the y-intercept to this point, or I can go from here to here, or I can go from the y-intercept all the way over to here if I want to. It doesn't matter. If I move from this point up to this point, I have to go two units up. So there's my rise, and then I have to go over one, two, three, four, five, right, all the way over. And even though that just looks like a tiny little slice on the end there, you still have to count, right, all the way till you hit the point. So rise over run is two over five. So there is my slope. And now I'm going to put this together, and I'm going to write my equation. So my equation is going to be y equals... Instead of that m, I'm going to put my slope, 2 over 5. We're going to keep that x because that's just part of our linear equation. My y-intercept is a positive 5, so I'm going to write plus 5. So there's our equation, very colorful again, in slope-intercept form. Then I'm going to stick with my color theme here because I'm kind of liking the way it's working. 
All right, we have to find the y-intercept in this table. Now, we've got a little issue going on here because I need x equals 0 in this table, and I'm not seeing an x equals 0. So I have to ask myself, where is 0 going to lie in this x column? And it's going to fall right between negative 1 and positive 1. So I'm going to squeeze a little 0 in here. And if I squeeze a 0 in between negative 1 and positive 1, I need to squeeze a number right here, too. So I have to think, what comes right between 50 and 40? Now, if I'm not sure, I can add them together and divide it by 2, kind of like find the average of the two numbers. But this is pretty easy. The number that comes right between 40 and 50 would be 45. So there is our y-intercept. So I'm going to say b equals 45. Now for our slope, I'm going to find the change in y over the change in x. So I can use the, these first two ordered pairs, right, the 50 and the 45. I can use the 45 and the 40. I can use the 40 and the 30. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use these bottom ordered pairs here, the 140 and the 330, just because they're all positive numbers, and I think that will be easy to deal with. So from 40 to 30, I'm subtracting 10. And from 1 to 3, I'm adding 2. So my change in y over my change in x is going to be negative 10 over positive 2. Since that divides evenly, I'm going to divide that and call it negative 5. So there's my slope. So our equation is going to be y equals. I'm going to fill in that slope first and replace negative 5 for the m. There's my x because that's part of our equation. And our y-intercept is positive 45, so we're going to write that as plus 45. So here's our equation in slope-intercept form. All right, our last example. I highlighted the y-axis. Here's the line, right? So this one is on a whole coordinate plane. We've got positives and negatives going on here. First thing is I'm going to see where does this line cross over the y-axis, and that is right here. Now, when they don't number a graph, we just assume that it's numbered by 1s. So here's our origin. Down 2 is going to be negative 2 for our y-intercept. So b equals negative 2. And I need to find another really good point here. So I'm going to start looking on my line for some points that are on perfect intersections. And I see one right here. And I see another one right here. Okay, they have to fall on perfect intersections. Let's do our change in y over our change in x, our rise over our run. So I'll go up here. If I'm going to move from here to here, I'm going to go up 3, and then I'm going to head over 2 to the right. So my rise over my run is going to be 3 over 2. And I'm not going to make that a decimal. I'm just going to keep it as a fraction because it doesn't divide evenly. Okay, let's write our equation. y equals... I'm going to replace the m with our slope we just figured out, and that is 3 over 2. Put an x there. And this time our y-intercept is a negative 2. So at the end of this equation, I'm going to write minus 2. Now you could write plus negative 2 if you want to, but we don't really like to have all those signs. It gets kind of confusing. So since this uh, y-intercept is a negative 2, I'm just going to write it as minus 2 on the end and avoid all of those signs. All right, so that's it. That's how we pick out the slope and the y-intercept, and we put it together into y equals mx plus b form. It's always going to be written in that form. I said you're going to be saying this equation in your sleep, absolutely. But there is nothing new that we learned today, so I don't want you to you know, fear slope-intercept form. There is nothing new. You know how to find the slope. You know how to find the y-intercept. All you're doing is finding those two values and replacing them in this equation. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know in class tomorrow or be sure to ask your teacher, and I will see you next time.